of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Hey guys, Julian here. Got a Sabbath message for you. Hope you guys are doing well. God bless you. Wow, things are really heating up, aren't they? Wow. I mean, come on. Let me give God the glory and we'll get started. Amen. Father God, I give you all the glory for dreams, visions, words of knowledge. Thank you for your word, Father, that we find in the Bible. Thank you, Father, for all the messages. Thank you for guiding us, leading us. Thank you for encouragement. Thank you for chastisement. Lord, I ask that you take this video to those that need to see it. In the precious name of Jesus. And Lord, right now we take the double-edged sword. We cut out every flickering tongue that would come against the brethren and the complainers, the mockers, the gawkers. We just cut them out. We cut out their tongues right now in the name of Jesus, the spiritual tongues that are flickering, the men of the flesh. And also, Lord, we take out the double-edged sword. And we cut out, cut off the head of the serpent and we kick them back to the pit where they belong. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. God bless you guys. I hope you guys are doing well. Again, Shabbat Shalom. This is a Sabbath message. And this Sabbath is a little bit different. Um, you know, the Lord said to rest every seven days. And um, so let me just say this about this. So um, I'm posting this on on the 6th of, of April. And, and the Sabbath is on starts at the 6th of April to the 7th of April. That's a Sabbath. It's the seventh day. But then there's a new moon feast the following day. So then it starts on the um, the 7th at sundown and goes to the 8th at sundown. That is a new moon feast or a new moon. Sometimes people call it new moon Sabbaths, but it's a new moon feast. And this is what's in the God's word. So, so Shabbat Shalom. And and I and you think you might be saying, okay, wait, what are you saying? There's a there's a Sabbath on on Sunday or starting tonight on Saturday and Sunday, but but yes, see what we're doing is we're following God's creation calendar that's in the Bible, not man's calendar. Uh, you know, not not the Gregorian calendar is a man's calendar. It has it's all the months and the days are named after uh, Greek gods. You do the research, and so and guys. I'll be honest with you, I I never really, um, you know, felt like I needed to to really uh, apply myself to this calendar or to any other calendar, but God showed it to me in a message. He started talking to the team in the messages and saying, "You need to get in tune. You need to get in line for the the real, you know." So the seventh month starts on this coming Monday. Um, and so that is the 8th of April. That's when the seventh month starts, the first day of the seventh month. I'm sharing 12 messages with you guys. Man, I've been getting inundated, inundated with messages. Um, I'm around uh, 344 messages um, since January 1st. And so as you can see, it's more than 100 messages a month. So it's, I mean, that, it's it's hard to keep up with it. I, I lose a lot of them, and what do, what do I mean by that? Um, you know, I I either uh, forget sometimes to write them down, or I I don't immediately. You know, I the Lord's rebuked me actually before for not writing them down. So I tried to make sure I do that. Sometimes I'm you know I'm in this while I'm sleeping, right? So I'm I'm hoping that I can remember it in the morning, and that sometimes I do, and sometimes I don't. So, um, but I, I do my best. I do my best. And the team is under some great pressure right now. And we can tell that we're at the end of this trial or period that we're in. It's a 40-day trial and period. And we don't know exactly when, when the day ends. I haven't really been told that. Um, but we know that we are in a very, um, very pressurized situation. And so... But I, but they're everybody's healthy. Everybody's doing well, and so keep praying for us because we're, um, guys. It's it's intense. I'm telling I'm telling you the pressure that we're under is very intense. And you think, well, what what kind of pressure? Well, 
think about it. If you've ever been through a leader course, okay, God has called us to be leaders of the church. And um, if you've ever been in a leader's course, you they they tend to ramp it up near the end of the course and they put a lot of stress on you, put a lot of pressure on you, so to speak. Um, lack of they they get they make sure that you don't have very much sleep. I've been through some some military courses, military schools, and they they all do this same thing, right? So they during as as you as you go through the course, it gets a little harder, a little harder, that much harder. So some of the things the Lord has done, He's He's cut back our sleep, um, and that's that's typical of uh, of a human made course of leader course. They cut back your sleep. Um, the work has to stay the same. You have to continue the work, and um, in this case, we we've been told to sacrifice more food. Um, so that's we're, we're sacrificing more food. We've been fasting more. Um, and so it's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure. And um, it's it's starting to wear on everyone, it's starting to wear on everyone. spiritual warfare. That's another thing, spiritual warfare. We've been, I would say, in the last two weeks, on average, every two to three nights, we're casting out demons um, that the Lord either sends to us or something like this. And so, um, if you average it out, the last two weeks, it's been about every two or three nights, um, we'll be going into a deliverance. And that's, 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 uh, that wears on you. That wears on you. So, so God bless you guys. I love you and I appreciate you. I wish I could talk with every one of you. Um, hey, you know, I hope you guys are, are taking everything serious, you know, and not just letting them roll in one ear and out the other. Okay. And what I'm talking about is messages, the messages that we're producing, um, the messages that other other believers, other prophets are are producing. Um, you know, God is warning. God is warning. And and lately, guys, what what do you, what did you think about the the yesterday? There was a a 4.8 earthquake in New York City. The day before that, the the Statue of Liberty was struck by lightning on the very top, which you know it might have happened before, but and then on Monday, uh, there's the the eclipse that makes an X on the United States. So, you know, there's signs. And that's what the Bible says. There will be signs in the skies and the stars. So it's happening, guys. It's happening. There's signs everywhere. Um, and even Jesus said there will be earthquakes in the last days in the first places. So, um, hey, it's it's happening, guys. It's happening. It's, it's, we're narrowing down. We're coming, the Lord has even told me, um, we're coming to the end of our trial period and it's almost over. So that tells me that we're ready for the next phase and that's spiritual ascension. And we're excited about that. Excited about that. So remember to keep the Sabbath holy. That's Exodus chapter 20. If you want to check that out yourself, and verses eight through 11, the Sabbath, we, I take it very serious on the Sabbath. We don't buy, we don't sell. Um, you know, of course, now, if your ox or the donkey gets in the well, you're going to go get it out, right? So, yeah, if something comes up and, you know, we have to go take care of something, we're going to go do it. But in most cases, we try to observe the Sabbath. I know the Lord has told me um, that we're not allowed to play. There's a pool table here where we're at, and uh, we're not allowed to play pool on the Sabbath. But he recently told me that Bible trivia is okay to play on the Sabbath, <laughs> the board game. Uh, so if you're interested in playing a game on the Sabbath, try out Bible trivia. That's a good one. Um, you know, housekeeping real quick, fasting. We host a fast on Monday through Wednesday night. You'll come off the fast on Thursday morning with communion. It's water only. There's no meds, no coffee, no chewing gum, no nothing, no food, um, nothing. No, no enhanced water, mineral water or electrolyte water. No, it's just you got to keep it simple, guys. It's a, it's a sacrifice. You're sacrificing. That's what you're going on to the battlefield. If you want it, if you want to be, if you want to be cleansed the right way, that's the way you do it. That's the way you do it. Okay. So if you want to, if you want to jump in on the fast, come on, contact me at open eyes of heart at gmail.com and we'll send you our fasting document. It talks you through it, breaking um, soul ties. And we talking about soul ties today. Um, the Lord teaching us something. And then also um, you're going on the battlefield, you know, and, and, you got to go against these generational curses that have been passed down from your grandparents, you know, second grandparents, third grandparents. You know, it's just who knows what they were into, right? 
So, hey, I want to say a special thank you to our the family that keeps sending us contributions and gifts every month. You guys are special and we love you and we thank you and we thank you for believing in us. I know that you're hearing from the Lord because the Lord has told me he's he's sent people to us to take care of us. And that's a blessing. And that's a real blessing. So thank you, guys. Thank you very much for that and for um, kind of taking care of us, if you will. We do God's work all day long, guys, all day long. We witness, Now we started witnessing to people uh, in near, near us. And uh, we also started, we were, were doing dream interpretation to guide them and to, to plant seeds and to nurture those seeds and, and cultivate those seeds. And, and um, that's what we're doing all day long. We, we eat, we sleep, we, we drink. God, that's all we do. That's all we do, guys. We are messengers in the last days. Okay. Hopefully that has not taken too much time. The title of this message is Darkness Just Ahead. Again, I, 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 the Holy Spirit gives me the scriptures. And the Holy Spirit gives me um, all the messages. So it's, it's a... Uh, it's, you're getting it now. I have um, on occasion, I'll cut out something that's personal for someone because uh, God sometimes in the same message will tell me different things. And sometimes he'll tell me something about one of the team members. I will cut something like that out, um, but you will not know it. And so just darkness is just ahead. Darkness is just ahead. So I got to I got to cover this, right? Are you confessing sin when it happens? If you have and you have no hidden sin, right? Are you repenting from sins and iniquity? And ha have you been active against spiritual adultery? Stamping out idolatry, guys, and burdens. Gosh, the Lord is telling me that the young and youthful, the young and youthful are the ones that are getting ready to go up in ascension, that you're 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 kind of remembering their burdens, you're calling them back, you're you're leaning back into idolatry and spiritual adultery is taking your eyes off God. Come on, guys. Come on. We're almost there. I'm serious. We're almost there. Um, you're, are you taking thoughts captive with the little white box? And there's a there's a training video on the training tab, taking thoughts captive, putting it in a white box and taking it to the feet of Jesus at Calvary. And then, you know, are you washing in the word? Are you washing in the word? Reading at least 10 chapters. That's what, that why why ten chapters because we have ramped up well the the ramping up of demonic spirits on earth ha, has has you know taken its toll on and if and some of you are experiencing oppression sickness something pain you're starting to experience this right this is oppression demonic oppression okay washing in the word kills it so that means so what I'm suggesting is. You pick out five chapters, and, and I'm not saying five chapters in Psalm because there's some short chapters in Psalm, right? Like chapter 117, I think it is, or 17. I can't remember exactly one. It's only two verses. But but so keep that in mind. Um, wash in the word with God, God's word, right? And then are you praying to Father every day, worshiping the Father every day, taking Holy Communion uh, with Jesus? Every day, that's wonderful. Up to three times a day. Be, do it before you eat. Eat a, a three, you know, th three meals. And then, are you fasting weekly? And when's the last time you've done a three-day fast? A three-day fast, guys. Um, not not trying to boast or anything, but you can fast for other people. I just recently did a three-day fast for someone that I love, and so, and, and I and, and I said, Lord, all, any fruit from this fast that I'm doing, please. Give it to them. Give it to them. Let them be cleansed, super cleansed, and let them be um, just ready, ready. So, so I just want to cover those things, you know. And so let's get let's get going. You know, again, the messages are given to me by the Holy Spirit. And I do not make them up. Um, in in Deuteronomy chapter eight, verses one through five, every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers. And you shall remember that the Lord, your God, led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and test you, to know that what was in your heart, 
whether you would keep his commandments or not. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and he fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might keep you uh, to know that the man shall, shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of, of the Lord. Your garments did not wear out on you, nor did your foot swell these 40 years. You should know in your heart that as a man chastens his son, so the Lord God chastens you. Guys, if you've been in this test with us, in, in, in your own individual test that the Lord has taken you through, you'll know that this is speaking to someone. This is speaking to someone. We're moving into our inheritance. The young and youthful, the bright ones, the chosen, we are moving into our inheritance, guys. So the first message I received on 331, this was last Sunday. My son, this is prophetic insight because of sin. You will be bringing things from heaven to earth in the spirit. And this will happen after spiritual ascension. Many are operating in the flesh and, and are spiritually dead and spiritually naked against the rebellious spirit. You'll be against the rebellious spirit. The rebellious spirit causes a person to speak poisonous words. And this transformed them into a low life full of deception. They are like snakes in the grass. There is danger because of a long standing issue against the rebellious spirit. Nurturing is beginning with God against the rebellious spirit. So, what is God saying? This long standing issue, guys, this rebellious spirit has been around since the serpent deceived Eve in the garden. So, so God is saying we're going to be nurturing uh, people. Well, he, he's, he's providing nurturing as well to those that have rebellious spirits. So you can get out of that. In Luke chapter 9, verse 23, so take up your cross and follow him. Many of you have heard me say this. Then he said to them all, if anyone desires to come after me, this is Jesus speaking, guys, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. So I have to ask you guys, have you been taking up your cross daily? Have you said, oh, well, you know, I'm not going to read God's word today. I don't have time. I don't have time for that. I hear this all the time. I don't have time to read God's word. I don't have time to pray. I don't have time to worship. I don't have time to fast. Then you don't have time for God. You don't have time for Jesus. Are you hearing me, brothers and sisters? If you don't have time to take up your cross, and follow the commandment of Jesus, then you don't have time for God. You don't have time for Jesus. And he's not going to make time for you. He's not going to allow you to hear. He's not going to allow you to see in the spirit realm. Message number two. I had this on 331 as well. My son, you are my leadership and are blessed and filled with the Holy Spirit. You are changing on the inside for those not intimate and not in fellowship with me. You are perceiving this in your heart, that you will be a large ministry and church. My son, you are changing on the inside for those not intimate and not in fellowship who are the future church. My son, this is prophetic insight. You will soon be young and youthful and you're in God's will. And, and you are perceiving this in your heart. You are where people will be without solid footing and no foundation in God. God says that several times at the end of that message. So, guys, he's saying that he's changing me for those that are not intimate and not in fellowship. And he's and he's, the Lord has told me in many messages, I've read a couple of those, and if you caught him in the future, in the past, he's changing, he's making me a, a hidden weapon, a hidden weapon for those that are having trouble getting into. Uh, on the narrow path. In Psalm 105, verse 19, it says, Until the time that his word came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. Tested who? Tested us. In Revelation 13, verses 9 and 10, If anyone has an ear, let him hear. He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Guys, killing with the sword is also killing with a gun. All right. He's talking about war here. He's talking about war. 
And here is the patience of the saints, of the faith of the saints. The Lord, you will be tested. Many of you are getting ready to be tested through war, through war, through famine. You're getting ready to be tested. And you're going to be made from silver to gold. You see, he's making you, he's going to be refining you. I told you to press in on this side of judgment. We're still on this side of judgment. It's still not too late. We just had um, two or three people just confess, step into the onto the narrow path, confess their sins, and step onto the narrow path and started to um, to worship with us and, and started to read their read the Bible and things like this. And, and we did deliverance on them. And God said, they're going to make ascension. And they just now, just now, this week, stepped on onto the platform, if you will. It's still, there's still time. This side of judgment. On that side of judgment, on the other side of judgment, you will be tested in adversity, adverse conditions. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1, says, um, I'm sorry, this is this is verse 3. But know this, that in the last day, perilous times will come. And that's what I'm talking about. That's what all these messages are about, brothers and sisters. Open up your ears. I know this, this. there's messages here for everyone. If you're tuning in, there's a message here for you. Please press in. I was given this message also on 331. My son, I am is giving you prophetic insight. My son, receive this in your heart with obedience and understanding. You are of the light. And this is the voice of Father who is God. And Father said, I heard this. Hey, in 30 seconds. It was more like, hey, in 30 seconds, okay? My son, this is the start of something new for unsaved people with their time is running out. And this will happen on the eve of Christ's return. We're on the eve of Christ's return. You will experience divine fullness and it is coming in the anti-meridian. So you might ask, well, what is this anti-meridian? This is saying, that there's divine fullness coming. And this is probably all of the young and youthful I'm talking to right now between midnight and noon. That's anti-meridian. That's AM. And the Lord said in 30 seconds. So I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. Like uh, we're going to be taken up. It's going to take 30 seconds or, or what have you. I don't know. But, you know, sometimes God gives, actually more than not, God gives riddles and he gives, and he gives, uh, you know, just, Little little things that make you really think, right? In Second Timothy, verse uh, chapter three, verse nine says, "But they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifest to all, as theirs also was." He's talking about your sin, all the sin that you've been in, uh, that you've been in, in dealing with, that you've been in, embedded in. It's going to uh, manifest. How does that man? What does that look like? Well, sometimes it's oppression, which is uh, the lesser of the two evils. And then the, lastly, it's demonic de demonic possession. You'll be tormented. You'll be tormented. And some of you guys are already being tormented. In 2 Timothy, Timothy chapter, 13, chapter 3, verse 13. I'm sorry, let me read you that. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13. But evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. That's happening, brothers and sisters. Look at the murder. Look at the all the, the the red horse has been released. That the Lord has already confirmed us. That horse is riding. We're we're waiting. We're waiting for the end of chapter six, guys. Go check it out. It's coming. That bright star that I just had a message for. It's an asteroid or it's a a, a planet of something. Comet? I don't know. God knows. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, it says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. And that's for anyone that believes that this that God's word eh, has some things that are a little off. That's what that if you believe that. That scripture, I just called out to you, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. Go look it up. That is for you, brothers and sisters. Message from 4, 5. Listen to this. My son, this is prophetic insight about your heart. 
the plan is you will have the Holy Spirit anointing. You have a covering and authority over other hearts. You are going to get sudden elevation, and this is on record. You will have the Holy Spirit anointing. You are beautiful and good, my son, living by faith, and this is what lies ahead for you while building a path for others. You are seeing prophetically, you will be in subjection to and influenced by the coming darkness. I want to talk about that. You will be over the company of people, and it will be beautiful and good. You will be carefree and casual in your destiny. And what lies ahead for you is spiritual ascension, and it is beginning. And this is on record. In the future, you will be helping believers with burdens. Okay, lots to unpack here. I'm going to try to do it really quick, okay? So the Lord's saying that um, I've actually felt an uptick in the Holy Spirit anointing. Um, also, um, sudden elevation, this is on record. He's saying that that is written down in my Lamb's Book of Life. That's what he's saying right there. And then um, also he says, uh, you will be in subjection to and influenced by the coming darkness. He's saying that we're going to be here on earth during the darkness. And it's going to... Uh, it's going to, you know, to 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 influence the things that we do. So we're going to have to operate uh, against the the coming darkness, right? It's talking about de demons and devils and oppression and possession and 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 evil man. What what they're going to be doing? And then he says that you will be helping believers with burdens. So. Uh, this is not talking to the young and youthful, but those still stuck in their flesh. And they're going to be stuck in their flesh because the Holy Spirit is going to be removing herself from anyone that claimed to be a believer, that did not have, that were not intimate with Christ, that did not have the white garments like the five good virgins. Okay, the Holy Spirit's going to be removed. And the Lord is going, is saying that he's going to install me and my anointing or or my anointing is going to help those believers with burdens and those that are having trouble um and that's why you're going to want to I, I don't know if there's going to be more than me that uh, more other people that are going to have this gift but you're going to that's you're going to want to find someone that has the holy spirit to help guide you to lead you in psalm 51 verse 10 it says create in me a clean heart O god and renew a steadfast spirit in me and how do you do that, brothers and sisters? You guys know the answer. It's a three-day fast. It's the Esther fast, chapter four, Esther chapter four. Please read it for yourself. Go check it out. Start a fast immediately. Just had a young lady comment online. She went into a fast, I think at midnight. That's 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 a soldier right there. That's a warrior. Come on. That's a warrior, brothers and sisters. God loves people like that. God loves you when you... you you go all in Ephesians chapter six, verse 13. When you can't stand, you keep standing. When you can't stand, you just stand. You just keep standing and let God stay. Let God support you. All right. Message was given to me on four one. My son, this is prophetic insight about mass execution, mass execution. I got your ears perked up on this one. God is gracious to dip you into leadership of the church. The church is a de dead, unclean and fleshly. And you will be organizing and putting things in order. My son, this is more prophetic insight that you will be a little king and sovereign and the son of a champion. And you are entering into the spirit. You will be handsome in the meadow. That will soon be a battlefield. You are ready to serve in standing one's ground in God's might. Do you see it, guys? Do you see what's coming, what he's saying? My son, you will be leading those not intimate and not in fellowship through a pressured situation. And they will see God's judgment, also known as the cup of trembling. The word of God is the will of God against sin. It's going to take faith during my fury, which is my judgment in the cup of trembling. In 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 17, Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. There were angels. And right now, Lord, I say a prayer 
everyone that hears my voice, Father, I pray that you open their eyes. Give them a gift, Lord. Those that are listening, give them a gift of it going in and letting them start to see. Let them start to feel it in their, in their soul, in their heart, what you're saying. Let them see it, Lord. Give them a gift because they're listening, Lord. Because they're listening. And yes, he will do that. It's now, let it be unto your belief. Let it be unto you as your faith. However your faith, how strong your faith is, believe. And message from 4-1 again, check, uh, this is the sixth method. So halfway through it, guys. My son, you are living by faith and you are perceiving this in your heart that seven days after the tribulation starts, it will be a place of revelation. And, and this is about a place of worship. Um, you will be putting together and building. This will be judgment to those in rebellion and those who have lost protection. They are spiritually unguarded, disgraced and naked, and this leaves them vulnerable. And those in rebellion will be raped, will be raped. And that could be multiple types of rapes. This will be a new level of glory of God for you. Will you? You will be experiencing the spiritual high place and the place of transformation. Transforming from what? Transforming from flesh to spirit, brothers and sisters. This is something he's doing. It's a new thing he's doing. It's never been seen on earth. Never been uh, done before. Message from 4 to 2024. My son, you are ready to serve. You are standing one's ground in God's might. You are perceiving this in your heart. It's going to take leadership for a large ministry and church. My son, you will be young and youthful for the church who is a dead, who's dead and unclean and they're fleshly. In your position with the team, they will be in the fullness of the Spirit and power, Holy Spirit ministry. God is now steering with the Holy Spirit. Guys, this is speaking to everyone who is going up in ascension you will be in the fullness of the Spirit, and you will be given gifts, and we will be coming back, and and we will be bringing in the harvest. Guys, chapter 14, Revelation chapter 14 talks about a sickle being handed to, uh, to the angels. We're bringing in the harvest. We're going to be preaching God's word, bringing in the harvest. All right. Message number eight from 4-3-2024. Actually, we start with Romans chapter 3, verse 18. There is no fear of God before their eyes. There is no fear of God before their eyes. These are the ones that are going to go through judgment. A message from 4.3, message number 8. You are seeing this prophetically. There is a momentary opportunity that will bring judgment. Let's talk about that. In the very near future, many will have shame. They are covering, covering their strength and their spiritual walk will be affected. In time, you will experience this and it will bring judgment to those not intimate. It is beginning for the flesh and their carnal ways. You will be doing business in a place of worship with sheep without a shepherd and followers. And this is in the future. This is the start of something new and it is your finished work. My son, this is more prophetic insight about being young and youthful. It is beginning for the ministry because your heart is the birthplace of faith for humanity and the flesh. This is a place of revelation and you have a prophetic understanding for humanity and the flesh. This is revelation is from God. This revelation is from God, that which comes from God because of prayer. And it is beginning where people will be without solid footing and no foundation. God is saying right there, guys, that he's giving me this revelation because of prayer, because we pray every day. And also wanted to point out that it says that there's going to be a momentary opportunity that will bring judgment. So the Lord is saying that something is bringing judgment. What came up in my mind and um, is a comet or an asteroid, um, maybe uh, a planet. He just told me the message. Um, he's in two messages. The cup of trembling, he's getting ready to pour on his cup of trembling, and also that a bright star is getting ready to make impact. For, uh, chapter 9, message from 4-3. My son, you are seen prophetically. You will witness to the men 
of Russia, and they will be soldiers. And this is a promise. Whoa. In a measurement of time, you will be filled with the Holy Spirit and God's glory for the church who is dead right now and unclean. And they are wearing their fleshly ear flaps, hats, ear flapped hats. This is their identity. And they are being self-willed. In the future, you will be young and youthful. You will be young and youthful because you are moving in a righteous direction. And this influence is becoming stronger for putting together and building the believer. Guys, I am going to be witnessing, preaching to Russian soldiers. Am I going to Russia? I don't think so. I don't think so. I, there's no plan for me to go to Russia as far as I know. God has never told me that I'm going to Russia. But he's told me I'm going to be here in the United States during the war. And am I scared or worried? Not a bit. I am not worried a bit. And I pray, I'm, I pray daily that that, that that does not change. But I pray daily for God to continue to keep me, and keep me safe. Um, but I'm going to be preaching to Russian soldiers. And he told me this is a promise. Wow. In Titus chapter 1, verse 15 and 16, it says, To the pure, all things are pure. But to those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. But even their mind and conscience are defiled. They profess to know God, but in works they deny him, being ab abominable, disobedient, and disqualified for every good work. Message number 10. My son, you are living by faith. I was given this by uh, on 4.3, sorry. Living by faith and are humbled in a pressured situation. Yes, we are. You are on the narrow path and are against sin, and you are changing on the inside. Thank you, Father. My son, you will be carefree and casual. And this is the start of something new with God for those who are caught up in legalism. Because you are moving in a righteous direction, my son, I am is giving prophetic insight that after cleansing, I just went through cleansing, you will be assisting those living in the world and the flesh because you have righteous, pure, and holy garments. The Holy Spirit is lifting the fleshly veil. Oh, did you hear that? I've been, I've been speaking about the fleshly veil. What happens when that, when the fleshly veil is lifted, the demonic will be seen. You'll be see, you'll be seeing the demonic very clearly. Okay. Right now they're behind the fleshly, they're, they're behind the veil, the spiritual veil. Okay. Also the bright ones will become bright. Okay. They will, the, the chosen, they will become bright because the, because God's glory, his, his veil is lifted and you will see God's glory and you will also see the demonic. It's going to be a very scary place. In Joel chapter 2, verse 12 through 13, it call to repentance. Now, therefore, says the Lord, turn to me with all your heart, brothers and sisters, with fasting. There it is, with weeping and with mourning. So rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful. Yes, he is. Slow to anger. Look how long this has gone. And of great kindness. And he relents from doing harm. Repent, brothers and sisters. Repent. Message number 11 from 4-4. My son, you are ready to serve and standing one's ground in God's might. And in the future, you will make an agreement. Your fame will be shining bright for the needs of healing and going to the hospital for the chambers of the heart because of the lifting of the fleshly veil. There will be a momentary opportunity. Moving on from this topic of the heart, this is now about being young and youthful. You are living by faith and you are seeing prophetically the young and youthful. And in this message, I said, they want to give me 700 milligrams of an injection in the, in the field of hairs known as the revival site. You will be young and youthful. In a measurement of time, you will be many will be looking for life, but they will be accompanied by horror and fear. Guys, the lifting of the fleshly veil is going to cause heart attacks. It's going to cause heart attacks. And the Lord is saying that He's giving the ministry healing and ability to, to, to heal people. And that's what I'm hearing. I've heard this in several messages over time. Now, guys, in message number 12, 
and I'm closing. It was given to me just yesterday. While on a pathway, the mind can be instigated by an ungodly soul tie, the demonic. My son, with the young and youthful, there will be spiritual warfare. Did you hear that, young and youthful? It's not going away. You will be carefree and casual with the man of the flesh. And this will be your identity. There will be criticism, criticism and blame will be the identification of the man of the flesh. However, my son, this is prophetic insight. Communion and fellowship with the man of the flesh will move them to becoming carefree and casual because your heart is the birthplace of faith. A couple of things I want to just touch on this again. It's real important. The Lord is saying, while on the narrow path, okay, your mind can be instigated to sin because of an ungodly soul tie. Guys, when you have a soul tie with someone who's ungodly, it's like you have a tube connecting you to, okay? And the demonic can go from them to you like that, okay? Let me tell you something. Four years ago, five years ago, I would have never believed this because I it's more like a religious spirit, right? God has opened my eyes so much. But a demonic can transfer from someone that you have a soul tie with, okay? It's very important that you cut all soul ties with anyone that is not godly, even some godly people, because what if they go out and sin? Hmm? Then you have a soul tie. So imagine David and Jonathan. If Jonathan or David went out and sinned, Whatever they did, whatever that sin was, they opened the door through the, through the soul tie to the other person, to David, Jonathan to David or David to Jonathan. That's just an example. Now, young and youthful will be experiencing spiritual warfare. From who? From each other. And I, I had so much trouble believing this at first. I'm like, what, Lord? Come on. We're going to heaven. I thought we were all supposed to be really nice to each other. But he's saying that there's still going to be spiritual warfare, and he's told me in another message that there's going to be some disappointments with those who are young and youthful. That meaning some of you are going to fail. You need to start praying against that right now. Prayer is powerful. And then lastly, he's saying that uh, the fleshly man, his identity is criticism and blame. So those that give criticism and blame, you can say to yourself, this is a man of the flesh. That's God's word, not mine, guys. In Romans chapter 3, verse 23, it says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And again, I'm closing right now. We're all sinners, guys. We're all sinners. But thank God, thank God, Father, that he masterminded the great escape. Yes, the great escape. The escape from what? Escape from bondage. Escape from sin. He masterminded it. Yes, he did. How did he do that? He brought his only son, his only begotten son to die for us so that he, he, he had to have a sacrifice for those sins, our sins. And he was the lamb that was slain. And he was sacrificed for our sin. Jesus, 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 Jesus brings the peace. Because of Jesus, we can escape sin. Because of Jesus, we have an open door to eternity. Do you see what I'm saying? Confess your sins. When's the last time you confessed your sins? If you've never confessed your sin, it's called that's, that's God considers that hidden sin. Because it says in the Bible, you have to confess your sin to your brother or your leader, your pastor, or your spiritual mentor. You need to confess your sin, brothers and sisters. And if your spouse, if your spouse is a believer, Go confess your sin to your spouse. Some of you have some sin that you don't want to confess to your sin to your spouse because it's 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 detrimental. It's gonna cause it's gonna cause confusion. It's gonna cause separation. You know what I'm talking about, brothers. It's it's a, it's adultery. Some of you have committed adultery um, with your spouses, your your husbands, or your wives, and and some of you have spiritual adultery. And that's, you have spiritual adultery against God. You're taking your eyes off God. Just like adultery is taking your eyes off your spouse. But God says you cannot, cannot go into heaven if you have not confessed all your sin. 
hidden sin is not allowed. Are you repenting from your sins and iniquity? Some of you guys are, are, are stuck in iniquity. Iniquity, You're stuck. You can't get out of it. A three-day fast will help you get out of it, brothers and sisters. Cry out to God. Are you being active against spiritual adultery? Are you stamping out all idolatry? If you're spending time with anything more than what you're spending with God, then that is called idolatry. I don't care what you say. I know what God's word says, and that's what his word says. Are you taking all your burdens and placing them on, on Jesus' shoulders? Many of you still have burdens. You will not go to heaven without God's grace and mercy. I'm just telling you, this is what he's telling me to tell you. Are you taking captive all those thoughts, putting them in a white box? Every time you have a, a thought, an evil thought, whatever it is, of someone, of someone else, of something, of, of anger, whatever, put it in the white box. Take it to the feet of Jesus. And then washing in the word and, and praying to Father, and worshiping the Father, taking Holy Communion. These are all things of taking up your cross. Repent of your sins. Confess your sins and repent, guys. Go find that place where you can kneel down and pour your heart out to Jesus. Beg Jesus. Yes, I'm saying beg him. If you have iniquity, if you have if you have oppression and if you have possession and you guys know who you are, you're attacked during your sleep. There's some there's something having sex with you in your sleep, um, making you do things that you don't want to do. This is possession. OK, possession, a demonic possession is a spawn of the flesh. Do You understand me because of sin in the flesh. It spawned demonic, the demonic. So you might want to go and pour out your heart to Jesus in that private place. Pour out your heart to Jesus, asking for forgiveness. If this is causing you to, if you're listening to my voice, God has told Jesus, here's one of mine. Here's one of mine. And guys, we're literally going down the path the, the, the narrow path and we're going to get the one from the 99. That's why we're here at this camp. We're in this camp right now so that we could come and get a person that God told me about in December. <laughs> That's the kind of God we serve. He sent us here so that we could cultivate them and pour water on them, precious water on them, to have them grow in the word. That's why he sent us here. Please confess your sins. Please pray to Father. Worship Father. Read God's word. Do Holy Communion. And fast. You've got to fast. We're on this side of judgment for just a few more days. God bless you guys. I love you very much. And this is Julian Out.